virtual. We're so excited to have you join us today. Um, on behalf of Cincinnati Museum Center, I am Gwen Elliott, and with me today is our very, very special guest, Gabrielle Hempel. Thank you so much for joining us, Gabrielle. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. My goodness, it's completely our pleasure. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in with some questions. You ready? Definitely. Awesome. Okay. Can you tell us about your job and explain to us what you do? Because it's really cool and I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> so I started, um, I kind of just switched jobs actually like two weeks ago. Um, I worked as a security analyst, which I got to basically view logs. Um, so records of who accessed what and who was on our network and what people were doing on our network just to make sure that, um, you know, there wasn't any bad person that had gotten into our network or anything along those lines. Now, um, you know, I started working a couple weeks ago for a healthcare company as a security engineer. So I get to kind of work on the other side and build the stuff that people hopefully can't get into. So I get to look at whatever we're putting together and say, okay, like this needs to be done securely so that someone can't hack into it. Um, and then I also do a little bit of consulting as basically a paid hacker, like a legal hacker. Um, I, there are companies that ask for people to act like a hacker would and try and see what information they can get from the company because it's better for that to happen and for them to pay someone to do that than for it to actually happen and someone to, you know, maybe with less good intentions trying to hack into their systems. I love it. I love that you're a hacker for good. It's <laughs> So great. Um, yeah, I just think that's the coolest. Um, can you please tell us what sparked your interest in this field? Have you always wanted to go into this IT world or is this a field that you kind of grew into later? Yeah, it's definitely not something that was even on my radar. Um, I went to high school locally. I was super interested in psychology. So that's what I decided to go to college for. Uh, I studied psychology and neuroscience when I was in college. And once I graduated, I really loved the field, but I didn't think that I wanted to pursue like a graduate degree or medical school or anything along those lines. So I started working in pharmaceutical regulation and just doing, you know, reviews for um, experimental drug studies done by the government and device studies. So um, I worked with a lot of medical devices, think like pacemakers, um, insulin pumps, things along those lines. And I kept getting all of these reports that they were vulnerable to being attacked. So there were ways that people could, you know, do something bad if they wanted to, like um, from far away, like a hacker could. And that was fascinating to me because you always think of someone hacking something as a computer system and not necessarily medical devices or any device really. So that piqued my interest and I kind of fell into that rabbit hole um, of information security and move my career over that way. I love it. I love that you just went to IT because you wanted to help people. And I think it's such a cool thing to touch on right now when we're talking about medical safety and health of everyone to know that there's people on the back end taking care of those devices that help keep people healthy. That's so cool. Um, speaking of cool, uh, what is the coolest experience you've had in your field so far? Um, aside from some of the cool technical stuff, a lot of just some of the talking I've gotten to do at conferences and events and things like that. Um, I was only like six months into my career and I was like, hey, it'd be cool to talk at a conference. And, you know, I kind of had been doing some research, bridging the gap really between the medical device stuff and the security stuff. And I was like, oh, I should submit this. And I didn't think I figured they had a while before they picked me to talk and I ended up talking at a conference. I think I spoke at six or seven last year. Oh. And um, I also had my first peer reviewed publication put out, which is not something I ever thought I would see. Since Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. So those were kind of the highlights of my career so far. Um, and it was just one of those things where you, know, you kind of look at it and you're like, wow, okay, maybe I do know what I'm doing. So <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, that's exactly, you know, STEM girls are all about exposure and learning different things and knowing your expertise, even if you're somewhat new, that you can still share with others and empower others. That's awesome. Um, so on the flip side, maybe um, not what's the most cool, but what's the most challenging part of this career that you have found? Man, as 
as much as there's been people that are really encouraging um, of the career path, there are also quite a few people that will tell you you don't belong here. And um, I think you get, you're going to get people like that in every field. But um, unfortunately, because sometimes there's a certain stigma around this field and because it's a very male dominated field, it's just how it's always been. Um, there are some people that just don't think that we necessarily should be in this field. So um, I think that that's challenging. You kind of just have to remind yourself, yes, I belong here because I can do whatever I want. And um, also just really um, doubting yourself, I guess. There's so much information in this field. There's new stuff that comes up every day. And at some point you're going to sit there and think there's no way I'm going to learn all of this stuff. Um, it's, it's overwhelming. There really is so much information. Um, but you kind of just have to accept that you're never going to know everything and, um, say, Hey, I do belong in the field. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Just use that grit, right? Like I can do it. I'm not going to know everything, but I can. This is my passion. Let it lead me for sure. Um, so kind of along that, um, path, what advice would you like to give to any young person who may be watching this who wants to pursue a career in the STEM field? My advice is probably just keep going. Find something that you really love to do. The cool thing about this area of STEM and even just computer science in general is that it touches every field. If you're interested in, you know, financial security, there's roles in that. If you're interested in healthcare security, there are roles in that. Um, there's a lot in the aerospace industry right now. So um, you can really just say, okay, I wanna find an area I love and then pursue it because at the end of the day, it makes work a lot more fun and fulfilling if you're doing something you love. Awesome, cool, thank you for that solid advice. You listen, yeah. girl? That's awesome. <laughs> Um, and so, uh, do you have a few more minutes? We have some questions that have been submitted. Would you mind answering a few of those? Absolutely. Cool. So, girls, I just want to thank you for submitting these questions. Um, keep that going. You can always go to our page to kind of see who's coming up next and see if you have questions for them. Um, so, these are some questions that we had from Gab for Gabrielle. Um, do you know of any online resources to help people about computer sciences and maybe for some kids and teens to start learning about this area? Yeah, definitely. There are some really good resources and I can send them all to you afterwards. So you have yeah, to that'd be awesome. but, Thank you. Um, one is called Code Academy. It's what I kind of started with when I knew I was interested in the field, but I wasn't sure what direction I wanted to go in. It really just teaches you how to code in whatever language you want to learn. So, cool. um, but it's, but it's via like fun projects and games. And at the end you're like, oh wow, I built this website and it can do X, Y, Z because I was able to code it. So it's really, really fun. It's free. Um, so definitely worth it. There are a couple of just education sites. There's one called Cybrary. Um, and there's also one by like CompTIA. And those are kind of your exploratory areas. It'll kind of tell you, okay, you know, these are different areas you can focus on in information security. And then finally, there are a couple of really fun websites. Uh, one is called Hack the Box, and then the other one is Over the Wire. And they're basically simulated hacking websites. So they give you like a project or they'll give you some information and they'll be like, okay, see if you can get into the server or see what information you can get. And it's just really, really fun to kind of uh, be able to cut your teeth, I guess, seeing what you can do hacking wise and almost teaching yourself by just jumping into it. That's awesome. That sounds like super fun and things that my kids in my house might be interested in. So Definitely. Fun games to learn hacking, hacking for good, as we've been talking about hacking for good. Um, but that's awesome. And so our final question today is, do you have any advice uh, for folks at home right now? We are using much more technology than we probably ever have in the past. So much technology at a high rate. What advice for you, do you have for those out there who are experience tech in a bigger volume than they ever have before. I know it's, it's a really crazy time. Um, there, it, it's one of those times where I think all generations are kind of in the same boat. Um, nobody's ever really been through anything like this and we've never had, you know, stay at home orders for so long or the technology to, you know, stand those up. So um, 
I, my advice is really just to embrace the technology. Um, you have to use it right now, whether you enjoy it or not, but <laughs> it's, it's a valuable skill to have. It's something that, you know, can definitely further your career and it's definitely the way that things seem to be moving. So, um, just use the time to get really good at whatever it is, expose yourself to whatever technologies that you're being asked to use and, um, you know, study. Um, if there's a program that you want to use, then this is the perfect time to check it out. Just, I guess, lean in a little bit to the use of technology since it's kind of what we have right now. Solid advice yet again. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so just honored to have you with us as we learn a little bit behind the scenes of all of this technology, both hacking and medical device technology. Thank you so much for that. Thank Thanks you for so much. Us safe. Um, and girls, STEM girls, uh, please keep watching these. We have two new STEM professionals every week, which is really exciting and really cool. Um, and I did want to remind everyone that since Cincinnati Museum Center is a nonprofit that relies on ticket sales, we are unable to do that right now during the no novel coronavirus situation. So if you are loving this content and any other content that has been posted online, please feel free to donate to us. You can find that link on our website. Um, Gabrielle and I will chat a little bit afterwards and we'll get those links so that we can share them with you too so that you can enjoy those resources she talked about. Thank you and keep learning. We're so excited to see uh, what our future STEM girls create both now while we're home and we can already engage in technology and in the future. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Gabrielle. Bye. Thanks.